Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. And today is the 9th of August. Yes, I got the 9th of August. Right? My friend's birthday now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're glad to know that we're all gathered here once more to have breakfast together. And we hope that you're going to have a wonderful time and also a wonderful weekend. Yeah. So today is August 9th. It is known as a National Book Lovers Day. Mm. So, when was the last time you read a book? By book, do you mean a hardcover book or something that it I can read? It could be an e-book, it could be an audio book, it could be any book. This morning. So what book did you read? Oh, calm down. You don't don't tell me it's the Bible. Because <laughs> <laughs> you should read your Bible every day. Yes, okay. so we're telling our viewers, when was the last time you read a book? If you haven't read a book in a while, well, now is the time to pick up one. Make sure you pick up a book or read it and just marinate all the juices, the resources that are in that book. Also, today is also known as um, co-working day. So, mm. as my co-worker, mm -hmm. hello, happy co-working day. Did you bring me smoothie? Well, we'll talk about it You're after the show. You're a bad co-worker. You're a we'll bad We'll talk co about it after the show, young Do not put me on <laughs> the spot here. Bad co-worker, alert. <laughs> Yeah, but it mm -hmm. is important that the people you're working with, you have a good relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Because whether you like it or not, they are your financial family, as it is. You have a family at home that mm -hmm. is biological and all that. But the people you come together to make the money or to make things work in your life are your colleagues in the office or anywhere that you find yourself yeah. that you're trying <clears> to make your daily bread. So be of good rapport with them. Mm -hmm. As the scripture says, as much as it is possible, live peaceably with the next man. Yeah, I know sometimes it's not easy because if you're working in a tense environment, um, there could be a lot of emotions flying all over the place. Mm -hmm. And then we know how office politics can work. Mm -hmm. But in as much as we're all trying, because at the end of the day, what you want to do is the growth you're, you're thinking of the growth of the organization mm -hmm. so your goal should be the organization not just your own personal ambition or anything so it is important that we're working together making sure that you don't make the other person feel bad mm -hmm. so e even though the environment can be filled with a lot of pressure it is tense um, still try as much as possible to hold it up together and then make sure that your office colleague um, still feels nice and still feels happy. At the end of the day, you only have each other yeah. to, to make sure and that you succeed. Because it's the organization. Mm -hmm. It's the organization. What I'm doing, I might not be able to play your role. You might not be able to play mine. So I have to function better in mine. You function better in yours. And together, we'll make the organization grow. Those people who want to bring down their colleagues... Uh, that's how the far? office politics how, I'm talking about. How far? Do they add their salaries to yours? Sometimes no. I, just, I just wonder, mm. why not just play your role the way you're supposed to play it mm -hmm. and leave the rest to... Uh, if the organization grows, you grow with it. Exactly. That's how it is. Exactly. They say when, when the tide rises, all ships rise. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you're a small ship or you're a big ship. You're, you're going to rise as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So why not just put in your effort? Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't have to necessarily be friends, but you yeah. know that but you are... be civil. Yes. I think that's the word be civil towards each other we don't have to be friends we don't have to be chummies but at least i understand that this is your role you function perfectly in it this is my role i function perfectly in it and we just do the best that we can and we can help ourselves anyway. yes i can help you if yeah. i feel like maybe you're lacking in certain areas i can help you that's what co-working is about so yes, National Co-working Day. Happy National Co-working Day to you. you Tell all, 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 all of your colleagues Happy National Co-working Day. Bring a smoothie on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> You're distracting me. <laughs> all right. On today's breakfast show, we'll be having several hot topics. One of which: Federal government stops sales of forty thousand naira, subsidized rise to civil servants. I cannot say that I saw this coming, but okay. Another one is Senate investigates alleged economic sabotage in petroleum industry. We'll also be taking global stories that made headlines to our national dailies this morning, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day.
leave for each second without hesitation. And that is why Elton John is a British singer and pianist. And he says, this morning, leave for each second without hesitation. If you know Elton John, you'll know his famous song, Sacrifice. Can you sing that? Sacrifice. <laughs> I don't have the best voice, but yes. <laughs> so anyways, yes. Yeah. So leave for each second without hesitation. What this means is bask in the moment. That's just the only way I can explain it bask in the moment without hesitation do what is necessary right now do not think too much we we tend to worry we tend to have anxiety over what hasn't even come you're not promised tomorrow you don't know if you're going to wake up tomorrow so this minute in fact you don't even know if you're going to be alive in the next few minutes or few hours so this second that you have is your present what you do with it is solely based on you so you can control that you cannot control tomorrow you cannot control the next few hours but you can control this very minute and so leave without hesitation and leave to your fullest bask in every moment and enjoy it and today is Friday so we're going into the weekend and that's the reason why we're giving you this quote to ensure that you're just letting your hair down having a good time this weekend if it's rest that you want to rest if it's movies you want to watch anything you want to do make sure that you're leaving for each second without hesitation yes and while you're doing that because a lot of people sometimes uh abuse this this saying more, mm. more or less and say you can be wild in mm. a way that will be negative to a, the people around you that's mm -hmm. not it um, live in such a way that you'll be asking yourself constantly, if I were to drop dead tomorrow or the next moment, mm -hmm. what will I be remembered for? What yeah. are the things that I will be remembered for? When you are on your sick bed and you think that you're going to die, the things you regret are the things that you Did left not. undone. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you have left undone that is wholesome enough that you would say, I wish I did this more so that when I'm remembered, I'll mm -hmm. also be remembered for this good thing that I have done. So live for the moment, live without fear. That's yes. more or less what it is. Yeah. Today is what you have, it's mm -hmm. the present that you've been given. Unbox that present and just enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, no, no need thinking about, yes, it's good to say, okay, what if I live till tomorrow? What am I going to eat and all mm -hmm. that? But remember the promise you were given mm -hmm. that even the birds of the air, they do not have a budget mm -hmm. or something. <laughs> but they, they, but they, they, they defend they, so well. Yes. Yeah. It's only humanity that, um, or humans that, do everything for fun. They mm -hmm. don't do it out of necessity, you know. Sometimes you, you just eat because you can't afford it. Mm. Sometimes you do a lot of things because you even fight for fun. <laughs> so, but every other creature does things according to need. Mm. If you enter into a lion's den, for instance, when they have just eaten, they are just going to be looking at you. Because they are not hungry. They are not hungry until mm. when they are hungry. So humans should think about what is necessary and mm. do that at that moment and just live their life without fear yeah so listening to you talk you were talking about um you know being remembered for something and i remember this um saying or it was someone talking about you might picture yourself at your funeral mm. what do you when you walk in there and you see your family your friends what are the things they will be saying are they going to be saying you lived a very full life? Are they going to be saying you did not do so much? So I feel like that's something that should always be in your head every single day that I can drop dead tomorrow. And what I do today, you know, determines how well I lived my life. My family will not tell the truth at the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody yeah, cool. tells the truth at the oh, funeral. <laughs> All right, let's move over to our top trending stories. This first one talks about the Olympics. Nigerian cyclist borrows bicycle from German team. Nigerian cyclist S.A. Lovina Ukpechere competing in the Paris Olympics faced a challenge when she lacked a bicycle for the carrying and sprint events due to short notice of her participation. The German cycling team Bond Duchar Radfaha stepped in to uh, assist her by providing her with a bicycle. She expressed her gratitude on social media, highlighting the German team gesture as a demonstration of Olympic sportsmanship. This act of support underscores the Olympic spirit of mutual aid and camaraderie among athletes from different nations despite competitive rivalries. So when I saw the story, I saw it on social media and there were lots of comments about it. And most people were just like, this is the height. I mean, why can't you, I know it is short notice, but why can't we make sure that we have everything on ground? I mean, what's the Olympics committee doing? What's the AFN doing? 
if, you're, if your athlete is supposed to go there right now, everything is supposed to be prepared. So that means were you not prepared? Mm, well, um, <laughs> the short notice thing is what I don't understand. I, don't, I, I have not had the details. I've seen this mm -hmm. headline. I tried to read upon it, but was distracted. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the details are. But from the write-up, I understood that it is not a Nigerian thing per se. It's mm -hmm. something that can happen to any nation. And there have always been this cooperation between o Olympic athletes and all that. And that's the commendation I just want to make today, that Germans... The Germany uh, team didn't mm. hold back, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. And the fact that uh, it, the spirit didn't just leave the cyclists, our own Nigerian cyclists, mm. oh, because I entered late and mm. all that, I cannot compete. Whether she won or not, I like the spirit that she, mm -hmm. with which she entered that competition. So I just, I just want to say... I mean, we're appreciative of the yes. German team, and that's what sportsmanship is all about, is the fact that regardless of both of us fighting for the same title yes. i can still say you know what take your shot i will take mine it's not you being at a disadvantage that would make me mm. get mine it should be based on merit yeah. so i love the fact that the german team was there to you know support and say okay even though this is short notice mm -hmm. here is an emergency bike what i'm just saying is I think the Nigerian team should have prepared better because there are, I'm sure there are circumstances like that, unforeseen circumstances, things could happen. And why I'm saying this is because there was another athlete, um, you know, that complained that she wasn't even entered mm -hmm. into, into um, the Olympics, even though she had qualified. Yeah, for a particular event. Yes. Uh, Favor of Philly or something Yes, Favor like of that. Philly. She had, she had qualified. So it, right now it's just showing like gaps that you would expect, like holes that you would have expected to be plugged and everybody should have been prepared. Yes. Um, this, is, this is not, I'm not even talking about this event, but the, this event is what has triggered uh, a discussion on what happens before, uh, before, during and after the events, the global events that we, we participate in. You yeah. find out that the preparation is so low all the time mm -hmm. and that's why even in football, in basketball, in every sport that we do, we find that our people go back, not because they do not have the skill, mm -hmm. but because the training and the preparation was not there. Mm -hmm. In fact, and then administrative bottlenecks are yes. also there. And then when they wait to the time of, let's say, Olympics, you'll find the contingent that, go, that is going as officials mm -hmm. sometimes outnumber the people who are really competing. Mm. There, there must be one director here, mm -hmm. this, that, there, and there are so many. If yeah. there are 100 uh, athletes, you might have 110 50, yeah. officials going. So why spend all this money uh, if you know that you can use this same money to, to prepare, prepare properly. properly? Yeah. And then that's the same reason one of our athletes left Nigeria because of all these kinds of things, mm -hmm. went back to the U.S. and competed for the U.S. and she won a yeah. silver medal. In fact, so most of the comments that I was saying, someone was like, this is the height. Another person said, if you are, um, you know, if you're, if you're for Nigeria, maybe in any sports um, event, mm -hmm. well, I don't even know what you're going through because I'm sure there is a lot that happens that if you were in a Sena climb, of course it would be better. But in Nigeria, there's so many administrative issues. personal development, issues. otherwise you can't. Right. There's so many administrative issues that sometimes even frustrate your efforts. And now, we're seeing so many people move over to other countries, mm -hmm. go and, you know, represent those other countries. And we're complaining. We're complaining that all of our talents are leaving. But what are you doing? You're giving them the push factor. You're pushing them away to go to other, other countries. We clap for them and say, Meanwhile, our own yeah. Nigerian born mm -hmm. or the Nigerian American, we'd like yes. to attach our names to success. Why successes. can't it just be Nigerian? And we know, it, it seems like we're just not developing. And sometimes it can be frustrating. If you go to, to football academies and all that, it is not talents you see most times. It's the children of the rich mm -hmm. who can pay for this place. Yes. Scouts will come, but they will cut slots. them out. Yes. Mm. So I have the millions to pay, and my child that has been eating pizza all his, his life <laughs> and growing fat will be the one that will be in academy Goodness. and all that. And then we find a very formidable team at the junior level, they never grow into the senior level mm -hmm. because somewhere along the line, someone it's is asking connections. for someone is asking for for bribe here, mm -hmm. this and that. It's it's really disheartening. 
I it's feel really like exciting. the the sports federation in Nigeria needs to be overhauled. So let's see what the the sports minister will do, especially in the case of uh, Favor of Philly, because he yeah. said he was going to investigate and all that. Mm -hmm. Let the heads begin to roll. Let's yes, see that yeah. things are being done rightly. Exactly. Okay. Now the Department of State Services (DSS) has denied any involvement in the recent invasion of the Nigeria Labour Congress NLC headquarters in Abuja. DSS spokesperson Dr. Peter Afunanya clarified that the agency did not conduct any operation at the NLC office. The presidency has not responded to inquiries about the incident and the alleged confiscation of documents from the NLC headquarters. A source from the presidency declined to comment, requesting to be left out of the situation. Hmm. Okay, that's, that's interesting. So if it is not DSS, then who, is uh, it? who is it? Is it the police? ordinary police, mm -hmm. uh, permit the word ordinary, or is it the army? Because yesterday I saw a clip, let me just digress a bit, I mm. saw a clip of the uh, Minister of Women Affairs or something Yes, yes. Uh, that was quarreling that somebody impersonated. Imper yeah, you know. she stopped the event. So this is an impersonation uh, as well. So if mm. it is not the DSS and they made it look like it's the DSS, the DSS should take it up mm -hmm. and investigate and tell us who did that. Exactly. As, as simple as that. Not yeah. just saying we are not the ones. Tomorrow you will say, okay, we didn't know, we didn't send him, we mm -hmm. have arrested him. Just like the army um, chief was saying, that uh, they are investigating what led to the killing of the teenage boy, mm -hmm. but he already gave us a scenario that is because he was trying to... You always so, blame so the has victim. So he has taken sides already. Yeah. So what are you investigating? Yeah. I hope this is really being investigated because, I mean, everybody should have that freedom. Even the NLC, they're obviously fighting for justice. They're fighting for the common man. So if their premises, if their headquarters is going to be invaded by these officials, then who are they? Fish them out. Mm -hmm. Let us know them. Simple. Don't just, you know, sweep it under the carpet. And I hope that this is not going to be one story that is going to be swept under the carpet. And in a few days, we don't even know what's going on anymore. All right, our final top trending story says, We case men threaten attack on Fubara's properties. The former local government chairman in River State have accused Governor Siminalayi Fubara of orchestrating the attack on his predecessor, Yensom Wiki's residence, by hunger protesters. They warned that if Fubara's action continued, they will mobilize to attack Fubara's properties, claiming he does not have the monopoly on violence. The ex-chairman, who served during Wiki's tenure, alleged that Fubara directed protesters to Wiki's residence and they vowed to respond by targeting Fubara's assets. State Commissioner for Information and Communications Joseph Johnson dismissed the ex-chairman's claims as irrelevant and claimed that they are interfering in matters beyond their jurisdiction. Johnson also alleged that the ex-chairman have been involved in secret meetings aimed at escalating the protest into a state of emergency, dismissing their actions as futile. Hmm, a lot happening in River State, and it's almost, it's getting to about a year. I thought by now, because we've had like different scenes, Act 1, Scene 2, <laughs> I thought that by now, you know, everything would have been sorted, especially with the president even getting involved sometime last year. I felt like by now they would have, you know, just do the handshake and say, you know what, it's fine. I've sinned, you've sinned, we've all sinned, <laughs> let's move on. But every single day, it seems it's eating deeper. And I just wonder how the people of, you know, River State is feeling. Because if you're having your governor who's even been distracted with all of these things, then he's not going to give you his best. Well, um, Crimea River. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why. Uh, but uh, I think the, what is happening in River State is really, really, really pathetic. And even at the national scene, um, I heard the other day that... Uh, uh, Samuel Otom is being suspended from the PDP in Benway State mm, because Benway. he supported a, an APC candidate and a Labour Party candidate. Mm. So that was anti-party activity. So he was suspended mm. uh, alongside other people and they did some few things. And I was asking myself, the wiki that supported the APC uh, presidential candidate, was that candidate, anti -party? Was that not anti-party? Mm. That even now the things that he's doing and saying is that not anti-party? Why is it not possible why do you pick to, and to remove him from there? And why is it that he can say whatever he says, do whatever he does, 
in public domain and nobody's saying anything mm. about it. It's still the minister. He's talking tough on about anything and about anybody Everything. at all and mm -hmm. nobody's talking about it. What kind of a society are we, are we even living in? And he's being fingered as as the person who is causing the mayhem in River State because mm -hmm. he has a faction that is not that is loyal to him who is not a sitting governor mm -hmm. and who are making life unbearable for the people mm -hmm. who are at, at the hem of affairs yeah. we should not be in other places this cannot happen how can you be, how can you be an ex-governor and you still want to rule the affairs so for i feel like we can wanted to put a stooge but now it has backfired. It's counterproductive, whereby that so-called stooge is like, you know what, I don't want to do the things that you're asking me to do. I want to run the affairs the way I want to run it. Because at the end of the day, you should have the heart of the people. If your predecessor is saying it has to be like this, it doesn't. you had your time. What, why did you not do everything you wanted to do in your time? Now it's my time. And you're supposed to be facing somewhere else. You are the minister of the federal capital territory. Why are you still meddling in the affairs of River State? I understand that you are, you know, a rivers man. Of course, you will still want, um, you know, the best interests, you know, of the, of the, of the rivers people. Does but he? still, But still, you can make suggestions. You can say, oh, I think we should... We should do it this way. And then all the governor has to do is take it under You should have a human then. face in the first place. Because, okay, uh, for instance, see, the governor has come into office and all the House of Assembly members, they are about 30 or a little uh, below 30, and 25 20, of them are loyal, so. are loyal to him, mm. which means they decide things that he says, mm. you see. So all the commissioners that resigned, you see how many there were that mm -hmm. resigned mm -hmm. that he was in instrumental to. So it tells you that he was not even talking about 50%. He was talking about 80, 85% yeah, yeah. of the state structure, mm. which cannot happen because the governor will just be a puppet mm -hmm. if you do that. And that cannot happen. It shouldn't That's happen. Right. You can be there, pull the strings and all that, but he wants to you do the Lagos models, model you can make in Rivers. You can make you can, you know, you can still even do it. You can even still rule, but you do it in the right way. When you're trying to put force, then of course the other person is going to bounce back and say, you know what, I don't want to do this. And it's just sad that this is happening in River State. I mean, this should not happen in any state at all. But it, it threatens our democracy, and we're not even seeing that. That is why it is so unfortunate. It's been whispered that it succeeded in Lagos, so maybe that's the, the model. Uh, so okay. <laughs> <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. But first, let's look at the weather. Please stay with us.